All right, so today I wanted to talk about a safeguard that you can use in Pro Tools to help prevent some issues that tend to arise with audio import. So one of the common things that I see with my students, for example, and with other beginners and with sometimes with people that have been using Pro Tools for a long time is the issue of you import your audio and then you go to move to a different computer and your audio files are missing or you import your audio and it's like playing back at the wrong speed because it didn't get converted into the proper sample rate, stuff like that. So what I'm going to show you guys today is actually a safeguard that will help protect you against these things. Um, even if you don't go through the whole import audio dialogue and pick the proper options and stuff like that. So I do have videos where I'm talking about how to import audio properly, you know, using the import audio dialogue and I think maybe some other, other ways as well. So I'm gonna put links to that up on the screen to, to those videos, however many those are. But what I figured I would show you today is actually within the setup window up at the top here and then you go to preferences. So it's an actual preferences option. So I'm gonna click on that. And what you're going to want to do is go to the processing tab here at the top and then go down where it says import in this whole section here. And then you'll probably want to check off automatically copy files on import and then convert copied files to session format. And so what the automatically copy files on import option here does is it makes sure that, you know, no matter how you import your audio, even if you just drag and drop it in, it's going to make sure that the audio file actually gets copied into your audio files folder. So it's in that audio files folder that's within your main session folder. So when you go to move between machines, between studios, between school and home, for example, your audio files will not be missing. You won't be missing audio files. So that is really, really helpful to prevent any issues there. And then the other option here is convert copied files to session format. And what that does is make sure that your audio file, when you import it, it's going to automatically get converted to the proper sample rate and bit depth, um, the proper format for your session. And I believe it also probably converts it to like if you're working in wave or whatever. Um, but I haven't checked that yet. I think it does convert it. But those are the two options here that I want to make sure that we focus on today. So I'm just going to hit OK now that I know that I have those active. And so what I've talked about in previous videos and what I try to tell my students to do is to actually go through the import audio dialogue, right? So you go command shift I to actually import your audio and then you can really easily see, you know, the, the format of the audio file, whether it has to be converted. You can choose convert instead of add to make sure that you're actually copying that into your audio files folder. I think it's good to kind of be aware of what you're doing in the software and be um, aware of what how the software functions. So that's a good thing to get to know. Again, I've covered this in different videos before, so I will just link to that on the cards. I won't go into details on this screen right now, but just be aware that it's out there if you're not familiar with it. But what I've noticed a lot is with students and with beginners is that they tend to sometimes ignore that, right? And they'll just drag and drop their audio file into the clip list here and just hope that it's gonna work. And then half the time it doesn't work, right? It's playing back at the wrong speed, it's missing when they hand in their projects, stuff like that. So I am going to import some audio that way so we can see this feature, this uh, preferences option in action. So I'm gonna do a command tab to switch to my finder window. And I have this audio file here that's just on my desktop. And this is actually from a, a podcast, but basically we can look here and see that it's 44.1 kilohertz and it's 16 bit. So if we look at the session, I'm going to go to setup and then session here. And you'll see that my session is not 44.1 and it's not 16 bit, right? So it's 48 kilohertz and it's 24 bit. So the session and this audio file do not match. So it will have to be converted. So I'm gonna just drag it in all willy nilly and hope for the best, just like people tend to do. And it's gonna take a second for this to go solid here because I believe it's, it's processing it, it's converting it and it's copying it. But if these preferences are active and they are working, what should happen is I should see this audio file in my audio files folder um, momentarily when we check and it should be in the proper format for this session. So normally if you just drag and drop and you don't have those settings active within your preferences uh, window, what'll happen is the audio file will still be referenced wherever it was originally and it won't be converted. So you'll have issues with, potentially have issues with the speed of the playback and you'll have issues when you try to move between machines.
All right, so now it's bold, so it should be copied and converted now. It should be all done processing this audio file. So I'm just gonna do Command Tab to switch back to my Finder. And so here's the whole session folder for this session, right? You can see right here, the title matches. And basically I'm gonna look in my audio files folder and see if I can find this file. So here it is, that's the file. And this wasn't here a moment ago, right? So now it's copied over, it's in Wave, like my session. I think this one might've been Wave already though. Let's look. Yeah, it was Wave already. Um, so it's in Wave and you'll look here, sample rate 48 kilohertz and 24 bits. So that matches my session now, as opposed to the original, which does not match my session, right? So it copied it over because of that first option and it converted it because of that second option. So that saved my butt. If I didn't have those options active, I would have some trouble later on or immediately, you know, depending on what the format was of the original audio file. So yeah, that's about it. I just think it's a really useful thing to have active within your preferences and Pro Tools. It's kind of like a safety net, so to speak. So I hope someone out there finds this helpful. You know, as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. I. You know, I was thinking about this and the convert copied files to session format. I don't know if I've ever had an instance where I actually actively did not want it to convert. So maybe let me know in the comments below if you've ever had that experience and what that instance was like, like why you didn't want it converted. Cause I'm kind of curious. I don't think I've ever, I don't think, unless it was like some weird experimental sound design thing that I was trying to do where I was like, oh, let's see what happens, you know, but I don't, I don't think I've ever actually wanted it to not be converted. So let me know if you have what, what that instance was like. So if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I apparently over 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. So that is a really easy and free way for you to help support my channel. If you do like these videos and you want them to keep going. So hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And I do have a Patreon. So it's Patreon patreon.com slash Cato Noise, and we have access to additional content. We have a Discord server that we've been hanging out on. We've been doing a book club that's all, we've been reading books that are like audio and music production related, and that's been a ton of fun. And we are about to start a new book within a couple weeks, which might be when this comes out or right around when this comes out. So it might be a really great time to join now. So other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thank you for watching. Okay, my hair like, reeks of campfire from last night because I'm a mess and my hair's still dirty and I really like it but apparently I found out the other day that some people don't like that smell and I I don't know is that a thing do people really not like the smell of campfire I kind of I don't know I'll like get my sweaters smelling like campfire and then I won't wash them for a couple of days and I really like that so but maybe I'm gross I don't know <laughs>